vocals and the Roland MC-101. A lot and probably enough has been written about the amazing features of Roland's MC-101 Groovebox. This box has so much to offer, except for proper input connections. In this episode I talk about different options on how to use the Groovebox in combination with vocals for a live performance. Essentially I want something like the Roland MV1 with better portability or a Roland SP44 Mark II with multiple tracks and a Zencore sound engine. The only way the MC101 accept input is via its Type B USB port that connects to a USB host device. This effectively means that you cannot easily get vocals into the device. Side note for the younger folks among us, this is a connector invented in 1996 and was given a second life in 2001 with the advent of USB 2.0. But it has been deprecated since 2017, some five years before this episode and a good two years before the MC-101 hit the markets. So once we managed to connect the MC-101, probably with the help of a USB-C adapter, to our phone or tablet, we can then start sampling sounds into the MC-101. I leave the option to connect to a computer aside as I'm focusing on a very mobile setup here. Instead of just using a looper track with limited recording time, we can export that looper track to a WAV file and then assign it to a pad on a drum track, which gives us 16 different vocal samples per clip. So besides the problem that we cannot use input effects like reverb or chorus while getting audio into the MC-101, we face the problem that we cannot route audio from one external device to another from our phone or tablet. Though we can attach a microphone to the phone or tablet while connecting to the Groovebox at the same time, it seems that audio routing in Android or iPhone iPad is not a use case for the masses. There is at least one app for the iPhone iPad called AUM that claims to support audio routing of different devices. However, though the devices showed up in the app when I tried it, I could not get it to work on my iPad and I could not find a single app that would allow me to do this on Android. So what are our options now? Basically, I want to achieve the following. Perform live with the MC-101 while being able to have live vocals along with that performance. Second, ideally the vocals should be beefed up with the effects like uh, reverb or chorus. Third, I want to record vocals into the MC-101 as samples for later playback during the live performance. Fourth. The whole setup must be as light and portable as possible. Fifth, everything must be battery or USB powered. Sixth, I want to use as few devices and cables as possible. Seventh, I expect an Android phone or tablet as a device that I will have with me anyway. Eighth, I do not want to rely on other hardware devices that I do not carry with me. After the initial findings that out-of-the-box support with Android or even iPad, did not seem to exist, I looked for alternatives which I found in these devices. Use a Raspberry Pi 3B, 3B Plus, with Pi Gem. Use a Roland Go Mixer Pro X. Use a Boss RC202. Use a Boss VE5. Use a Tascam DP008EX. So for the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus. In this setup we would connect a USB microphone such as the Audio-Technica ATR2100X USB to one of the USB ports of the Raspberry. The MC-101 will also be connected to one of the USB ports of the Pi. Routing could be done with Pi Gem, however we then needed the Raspberry 7-inch TFT touchscreen as well. Pi Gem provides basic acoustic effects like reverb, but as an alternative, routing via Pavo control should be possible but not tested. But then we would lose the audio effects. With this we can directly record into the MC-101. For getting the mix out of the Raspberry, we can use a simple USB audio adapter like one from Hammer and use the 3.5mm 1/8 of an inch TIS output port. An alternative could be to use one of the boards from HiFi Berry in case we want an RCA output or similar. It would be also possible to use the stereo out of the MC101 itself to send the combined audio to speakers. We would then not need the additional USB audio adapter. The Raspberry itself weighs under 50 gram, and even with a case, it would be one of the lightest options here. Power consumption around 400 milliamps at 5 volts without attached USB devices is relatively high when compared to other options. Roland Go Mixer Pro X. 
Originally intended for these happy people of Schöner Wohnen doing podcast style jam sessions at the coffee table dancing their names on TikTok, this device may actually have some use. It features, amongst others, an XLR input to which we can connect our microphone and an 3.5mm TRS input from which we can get the sound of the MC101. The mix then can be sent out via its 3.5mm TRS stereo out. The GoMixer Pro X, however, does not support vocal effects, so no reverb. Recording into the MC101 would go via the phone or tablet by recording to a WAV file on the mobile device first and then playing it into the looper track or directly importing it onto a pad. From there, we can use all the effects that the MC101 offers. A plus with this device is we can use the phone to create a recording of the whole performance and have the option of a separate fader or knob for adjusting the final mix. With only 220 gram, this setup is quite light and the power draw of 170 milliamps is pretty small as well. To get reverb into the signal chain, we could use an effect pedal like the TC Helicon Voice Tone R1. However, with a weight of 420 gram and an additional cables needed, this would make the whole setup much clumsier. This weight problem is due to the fact that the pedals are supposed to be sturdy, which is okay, but I was also wondering if we could replace the metal parts with plastic made from a 3D printer, but that is another story. Side note 1. Not tested, the pre previous version, the Go Mixer, is even lighter and uses less power. It is not manufactured anymore, but it can still be purchased on platforms like eBay. It lacks an XLR input for microphones, but provides a quarter inch input instead. If this was a working setup and we could skip the reverb requirement, so this might be even a better option than the Pro X. Side note 2, not tested either. There seem to be other devices like the Maker Heart Just Combo that appear to do the same as the Go Mixer. Exact specs, however, are difficult to find or differ from source to source. Boss RC202. The little sister of the RC505 gives us everything we want and more, which is the weight. With 950 gram, we get a two track mixer that can be powered via an adapter cable, for example, from my volts, from a USB power bank. It has all the effects like reverb and chorus, plus the additional benefit of being a real looper with 99 layers. The rated power consumption of 440 milliamps at 9 volts is relatively high, but regular power bank should get you through the gig. Inputs and outputs are proper quarter inch, 6.35 mm cables, which have the downside of asking for bigger and such heavier cables as well. Boss VE5, another device that does not seem to be sold anymore. There are, however, a few used models to buy. Though not tested by me, the specs seem promising. It features an XLR input and a 3.5mm TS auxiliary input and a 3.5mm phone's line output. And it has effects like reverb. A current draw of 190mA at 9V is more at the upper end of the compared devices. Recording into the MC101 for sampling would be done via the phone as with most other options. Tascan dp 8 EX. I saw this device first on a YouTube channel where someone with a similar use case described his approach to the problem. This mixer is also a built-in recorder and features all the necessary inputs and outputs and effects. However, it is quite bulky and is at a 610 gram quite heavy as well. Power consumption is rated at 2.5 watts and thus in the upper spectrum of our devices. Recording into the MC101 would be done via the two-step approach via the phone or tablet, as described previously. Summary. It is surprisingly hard to find a way to use the MC101 with vocals in a live performance environment. So the folks at Roland did an impressive job to keep us interested in their other, more expensive and heavier gear, or stuff from other companies. So what will I choose for my final setup? Difficult to say. But in my opinion, I will either go for the Raspberry or the GoMaxer Pro X if we skip the reverb uh, requirement. The latter has the advantage of best connectivity and low power consumption, and especially with the Go Mixer instead of the Go Mixer Pro X, it is comparably as light as the Raspberry. Or I skip the MC101 altogether and look for a single device that does it all and possibly change some of my requirements. Hope this was helpful to you. And now the question is, what would you do? And do you know any other options how to tackle this problem? See you next time.